controlling our thoughts. How we govern our thoughts is indeed an important topic. It should be the attitude and desire of Christians to make every thought count for the Lord. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 This verse should be every Christian's goal, but that does not mean that it is an easy one to attain. Simply put, proper Christian control of one's own thinking can only be potentially accomplished by those who have gained a certain level of spiritual growth, while the day-by-day, moment-by-moment, struggle to bring all thoughts into captivity for Christ is a fight that will never end as long as we are in these mortal bodies of indwelling sin, even for the most spiritually mature. Thus this problem is both a strategic one, that is first we need to commit to and make significant progress in spiritual growth, and a tactical one, how do we actually accomplish this goal of only thinking what is beautiful? Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4.8 There are three areas wherein we exercise our God-given free will, namely in what we think, what we say, and what we do. The last is hard enough to control, but it should be the first priority for anyone determined to pursue sanctification, the defense of the Christian way of life, wherein we gain ever greater mastery over sinful conduct. Therefore, my beloved, possessing such promises as these, let us cleanse ourselves from every pollution of body and spirit, perfecting our sanctification in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 1 Pursue peace with everyone and sanctification, without which no one will see the Lord. Hebrews 12.14 But while it takes time, effort, and spiritual growth to begin to make solid gains in this area, taming the tongue is, as Scripture tells us, virtually impossible. James 3.2-10 and Psalm 39.1-3 However, with God all things are possible and we most definitely are to take ourselves in hand in this important area of self-policing as well. The last frontier of putting off the old man, Ephesians 4.22 and Colossians 3.9, is this problem of controlling what we think, a most difficult task as Scripture affirms. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17.9 Controlling what we think is the ultimate high ground of the Christian way of life, this is where the battle of our will, our choices for or against God's will, are fought out day by day, moment by moment, step by step. It is also in some respects a somewhat different battle than controlling our deeds and our words. For in those other two areas of behavior, merely doing nothing is sometimes acceptable. Often, just by refraining from acting and by staying silent, we are able to fulfill the biblical mandates to avoid sins of word and deed. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. Proverbs 17.28 Although occasionally inaction is sinful. Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? Proverbs 24, 11 and 12. But the mind is a vacuum, and if one does not fill it with truth, it will suck up all sorts of depravity. If it is left idle, all sorts of pointless thoughts, fantasies and vulgarities are likely to begin to intrude. This is so in the case of long-term effects, and that explains the process of apostasy, and is true in the short term as well, that is, even if we only let down our guard for a moment, we are likely to lose positive control of thinking what is good. That is why Scripture in very many places tells us to concentrate, to think, to meditate upon the truth, all the good things we know about the Lord from Scripture. Happy is the man who does not walk in the path of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. His delight instead is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on his law day and night. He will be like a tree planted where the waters divide, which will yield its fruit in its season, and whose leaf will not wither. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 
Therefore, since you have been resurrected positionally with Christ, be seeking after the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your hearts, literally minds, on the things above, not the things on earth. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 These verses are an extremely valuable perspective in this sort of mental combat. Thinking about the resurrection, about the new Jerusalem, about the end of the pain and toil and tears of this life, about the rewards to come, and about being with Jesus forever, are very helpful in setting aside worldly thoughts. Indeed, most especially, we ought to be setting our hearts and minds on Jesus Christ, walking with Him in all our thoughts and prayers and songs in our heart to the Lord. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father, from whom His entire family in heaven and on earth has received its name, that He may grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be powerfully strengthened in your inner person through His Spirit, so that, rooted and grounded in love, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Ephesians 3, 15-17 Though you have never laid eyes on Jesus, yet you love Him. And though you cannot see Him at this present time, yet you have faith in Him. For this reason, you rejoice with an inexpressible joy that bespeaks the glorious future to come, when you shall carry off in victory the ultimate prize, your life's eternal deliverance, which is the very purpose and objective of this faith of yours. 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9 For Moses grew strong by seeing the one who cannot be seen, that is, by keeping his mind's eye on the invisible Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11, 27 And the best way to see Christ is often to imitate him in all we think and say and do in this life, just as Scripture enjoins, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and Romans 13, 14. If we are fighting a good fight in our hearts and minds, striving to keep our gaze fixed upon Jesus and the truth of His Word, it is much easier to keep bad thoughts from intruding. And the best way to force them out if they should intrude is likewise by replacing them with good thoughts. It is certainly true for anyone who has grown up in this country so replete with negative and godless images, TV, movies, internet and music, and its generally pagan mindset, that the evil one will always have plenty of ammunition ready at hand in our memories and subconscious to use against us, not to mention in all of the sights and sounds and secular thinking that continually bombards us. Even the most circumspect and godly person would be hard-pressed to never allow any exposure to such things whatsoever, since these sights and sounds are ubiquitous. So while it is true that we have to accept the consequences of all that we may have done in the past, yet what God is able to do now through the power of His Spirit who dwells within us, working together with our spirit, through the vivification of the word of truth, we have stored in our hearts through faith, far surpasses anything Satan and his minions might wish to do. It is most certainly not too late, for Scripture tells us to forget about our past mistakes once we have repented and confessed and moved on, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, and Psalm 25, 7. We only need to resist the devil, and he will flee from us, James 4, 7. In terms of what is going on in our hearts and minds, taking full possession of that promise requires consistent spiritual growth, an understanding of and faith in the ministry of the Spirit to us, Romans 8, 9 through 17, and Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, and a sometimes aggressive assertion of our own will, in subordinating ourselves to God's will. Our minds, hearts and thoughts belong to us. We can and do control what we think, even if it is sometimes a struggle. We can and do control what we feel, even if often we allow our feelings to get the better of us. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. We have the power of free will and the unsurpassed power of the Holy Spirit. We are free to use them to the glory of God. We are free to focus on Scripture, on the truth, and free to begin to see our Lord Jesus at all times and in all places. For to this we have been called, even if it is no easy calling and even if it requires constant effort and continual scrutiny on our parts.